and welcome to The Voyage, coming to you from the beautiful Gold Coast. Today sees us on the high seas, and what a lucky girl am I. My vessel of choice this time is the breathtaking Princess V57, and our crew have cast the lines for a day out on the water I know you are going to love. Our destination today is an island which brings up what can sometimes be an issue in a boat of this size, transferring passengers from ship to shore. However, as you'll see later, the Princess Design Team are a very capable group. This V57 garages an Italian-designed AER tender that is perfect for our destination. We'll show you how easy, safe and quick it is to launch and recover. Something that as an owner can keep you up at night is thinking about dragging anchor. Since we're out and about on the water, we thought it timely for Scott to give us a few tips on anchoring your vessel. Chef Andrew Mirosh will be along to present sashimi his way with some delicious accoutrements. The Sanctuary Cove International Boat Show is coming May 20 to 23. It's almost as old as Sanctuary Cove itself and is one of the largest boat shows in the Southern Hemisphere. Let's take a look. Since its inception in 1989, the Sanctuary Cove International Boat Show has been drawing hundreds of thousands of visitors to the Gold Coast. In fact, this year, it's estimated more than 45,000 people will attend the four-day event after last year's COVID cancellation. Showcasing the latest boating and marine innovations, the event holds a significant place in the International Boat Show calendar. With just over 100 exhibitors when it debuted 32 years ago, Ago, it's now set to more than triple that and display more than 600 watercraft from super yachts to fishing boats. The marine industry has certainly weathered the storm over the past three decades. Molfa has expanded the Sanctuary Cove Marina in response to birthing demand. And with a revitalised retail village and intercontinental resort, this year's show is sure to be a crowd pleaser. Princess will have four new vessels on display at their biggest stand ever this year. Tickets are available now at sanctuarycoveboatshow.com.au. If you haven't marked your calendar yet, be sure to block out May 20 to 23. For now, though, on with the voyage. Here is Scott from Princess Yachts Australia with some tips for you on successfully dropping the pick and staying put. Hi, I'm Scott. Today we're going to talk about anchoring. So as we're coming towards the anchor edge, the first thing we're doing is we're checking our wind and our tide to see which way the boat's going to hang in the anchorage. Then once we're in the anchorage, we're checking our depth. We're going to go up the front, unclip our anchor, and then lower the anchor down and have roughly four to five times the depth of anchor chain out. As we're lowering the anchor down, we're a little bit of reverse as we're laying the chain out pull the boat back and then just grabbing the anchor in properly. Once the anchor is grabbed, we make sure once again before we switch our engines off that the boat is holding and not dragging on the anchor. So a second way to anchor the boat is when you come into the uh, anchorage, make sure you've got someone driving the boat of course. Someone else grabs on the control up here and they can lower and raise the anchor from this front device. That way you can keep an eye on the chain as it goes out and really make sure it grabs. So we've arrived at wave break, we're safely anchored. Now we would suggest putting the snubber on the anchor chain. Firstly, we put the ropes over both the cleats on both sides. So the next step is to slide the chain claw over the chain, like so. And then before you start to let the chain go out, keep some load on the rope and let the chain go out. Keep the load on. and then the snubber is loaded up. And the reason we put the chain claw on is to take a bit of the snatch out of the chain, so it just helps with the anchor staying firm in the bottom and also not putting load on the anchor winch. Time now to take a look at the boat we are on today, the Divine Princess V57. Well, we're here on board the magnificent Princess V57 with Greg. Greg, tell us a bit more about this vessel. So the, this V57 is a 2014 model. It's powered by Volvo Penta's D13 800 horsepower engines, and it's done a mere 300 hours. Uh, it's very well presented. One of the key features on this is this magnificent opening sunroom. 
Well, we might get you to take us on a tour. It'd be my pleasure. So it's got a great driving position at the helm of this V57. We've got a 12-inch hybrid touchscreen. We've got our autopilot controls and our multifunction displays. Also, we have, we're able to close the sunroof from here. So downstairs on the Princess V57, we have a well-equipped galley. There's a fridge, microwave, dishwasher drawer, and we also have three cabins and two bathrooms. A dinette down, twin bunk cabins to starboard, and then forward is our VIP. So come through and have a look. So downstairs we have a full beam master cabin with these massive panoramic windows and its own ensuite. So in the aft entertaining area of the Princess V57, we've got a barbecue and sink, an ice box, and this massive wraparound lounge and a sun pad for those relaxing days. One of the surprises of the Princess V57 is its tender garage. A great addition for boating adventures like this one. A tender can be a huge comfort and provide opportunities to get more from your day out on the water. Italy's AER manufactures this range and Princess Yacht's Greg Haynes is going to show us just how good they really are. So this is one of our AER marine tenders. It's a solution for tender garages. Normally a tender garage only takes a jet boat, but AER designed this folding transom so the outboard folds inside the boat for a tender storage. Also, if you want a larger tender on your hydraulic platform, this works really well. So all the AR Marine tenders are designed with Orca Hypalon, so really good construction. Um, they have nav lights, bilge pump, this boat has a Garmin GPS. One thing they do is they use a binnacle throttle so you can stand at the helm and drive, which most tenders you have to sit down. Really good for launching, so on this boat for example, this Princess V57, we drop the transom down and this cradle just slides out and the tender goes in the water, so really simple operation. On a flybridge boat with a hydraulic platform where the tender's on the platform, all you do is press the button and drop the platform down to the water and then the motor will fold in and away you go. Well, I think I'll leave the island hopping to them. It's time to put my feet up for a bit and enjoy this sensational Queensland sunshine and seafood. Let's check in with Chef Andrew Mirosh, who's about to show you how to prepare a simple sashimi to serve on the back deck. When you're out boating, a great afternoon snack is sashimi, fresh sashimi. This is a little piece of yellowfin tuna. It's one I caught yesterday. It's a quite a small fish, so generally you look for the really big red ones, but I don't care. It's so fresh, it's so good, and it's so nice, and so simple to prepare. Just square your ends off. Cut. Some little bite-sized pieces. You'd use anything for sashimi. Yellowtail kingfish is really good. Bluefin tuna, southern bluefin tuna, yellowfin tuna, albacore, big eye. Almost, you can sashimi almost any fish. Wahoo's a great one, Spanish mackerel's another one. So don't be afraid to try them all. My favourite's yellowfin tuna or big eye tuna. It's darker, it's richer, it's got more fat in, but this this will just be melting your mouth. So I use a little bit of wasabi paste. Just dot that round the plate mainly for presentation. A little bit of pickled ginger. If I can pick it up. Over the top. Drizzle of soy sauce. The flavour. You don't need a lot of soy. And I love this stuff. Sriracha mayonnaise. So, put a little drop of that on each bit of fish, a pair of chopsticks, and away you go. 35 seconds from way to go, and what a snack. 
Thank you, Andrew. That certainly does look incredible. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the latest episode of The Voyage. If there is anything you'd like to see on the show, make sure you get in touch with us via the Princess Yachts Australia Facebook page. And don't forget to mark May 20 to 23 in your calendar for the Sanctuary Cove International Boat Show. Until next time, bye for now.